Good evening, this is Money Matters, and I'm Doug Dobbs. Well, in a move the street has been anticipating for weeks, the Archer Daniels Midland Corporation today purchased the state of Indiana. This is the first time a multinational corporation has taken over a sovereign state. And joining me now to discuss the ramifications of ADM's move is Sneed Richgold, head market analyst at Bile Sloth and Grasping. Sneed, is ADM's takeover going to fly with investors? Doug, that remains to be seen. I am very excited about the initial acquisition from a fiduciary standpoint. This is something ADM needed to do, and it is not that unique from a global perspective, because while it is the first corporate purchase of a so-called United State, uh, American corporations have owned vast sections of Central and South America since the late 1800s. Sure. Uh, what I am advising my clients to watch for prior to altering their portfolios is how rapidly will ADM move to create in Indiana a controlled agrarian environment devoid of government regulation which will maximize the reinvestment of all dividends with monitored bond premium inducements. If ADM follows that course, they will generate tremendous value for their shareholders. So you would recommend investment? Oh, if they follow that course, I'd buy, 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 yes. Just out of curiosity, what if you happen to live in Indiana? What, uh, what are your options? Oh, I don't know. I, I'd imagine you'd be deported or enslaved or killed. However, ADM chooses to address that particular aspect of their takeover. And if you were advising ADM, you would advocate what? I would say that Archer Daniels Midland is leveraged to the hilt with this buyout. And any ADM financed relocation of people out of Indiana is certainly going to diminish your short term margin enhancement. So I would say. You'd say kill them? Kill everybody? I would liquidate my overpriced complex vertebrate assets, yes. I see. Now, in any takeover, there's a period of consolidation. So if you're an Indiana family who has the means to escape, you should certainly make every effort to get out of Indiana, then turn around and invest in ADM stock because it's going to Neptune. Sneed, in your opinion, does this unprecedented cooperation, the federal government selling off a state to ADM, does this bode well or ill for the McDonald's restaurant chain's proposed takeover of government-owned sewage treatment plants? Oh, that's a go. That's going to happen. Uh, McDonald's made a very equitable offer for the sewage facilities, and the government will accept it once interest transfer annuities stabilize. When McDonald's does take over, however, they are going to be faced with having to make a very difficult multitasking decision because payroll-wise, McDonald's cannot afford to employ sewage workers and food preparers so one of these two groups will have to perform both functions but with the new GOP health standards I see no problem there and always remember when you eliminate people you electrify profits Sneed Rich Goal of Bile Sloth and Grasping in other financial news the General Mills Corporation today purchased the publishing rights to the works of the late Russian writer Fyodor Dostoevsky a spokesperson for General Mills stated that while there were no immediate plans to alter the text of Dostoevsky's novels, many of the titles will be slightly changed to reflect General Mills' investment. Among the new titles of Dostoevsky's classic works will be Crime and Pepsodent, The Brothers Caramello, and Notes from the Underwood Deviled Ham. Well, it's an election year again, and as usual, the Democrats appear to be playing the politics of class warfare. Here with some thoughts on the subject is our own Meyer Candleman. Meyer? Thanks, Doug. And yes, like the swallows returning to Capistrano, the Democrats in an election year return to the politics of class envy. But unfortunately for the donkey party, the latest independent economic findings do not bear out their assertions. First of all, if we look at income growth for the richest Americans in the 90s, we see that yes, income and profit for the richest Americans has gone up slightly throughout the decade of the 90s. However, the story doesn't end there as the Democrats would have you believe. When we look at income and profit for the middle class, we see that middle class wealth also has gone up throughout the 90s, though perhaps to a lesser degree. Finally, when it comes to actual income, as you can see, the middle class is still much closer to the rich than they are to the poor. I'm sorry, the chart is upside down. There we are. 
As I was saying, the middle class is still much closer to the rich in aspiring to be rich than they are to recognizing their common economic interest with the poor. So, Democrat rhetoric aside, it's obvious that their unshakable faith in a Republican liberated, open market operated American dream has given the middle class exactly what they deserve. Doug? Join us again tomorrow on Money Matters when we'll examine the unprecedented number of firings that will occur with the proposed merger of every bank in the world into one giant bank. Uh, Doug, D Doug, forgive me for interrupting, but our primary focus on this bank merger, which incidentally I pray will go through, should be on the incredible windfall profits for shareholders and not on a couple hundred thousand job losses. I mean, come on, let's put it in perspective. My apologies, Sneed. And we'll also be looking at the rumored consolidation of bile sloth and grasping with Avarice Brothers Limited. What? Till tomorrow, Doug Dobbs. Good night for Money Matters. What, 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 what rumor, Doug? What, what, what rumor? What, what have you heard? W will I still have a job? How, how, will I, how will I feed my family? This isn't fair! This just isn't fair!